Hey all, welcome back. And this is if else if statements lesson. So we've talked about if statements and then if else statements, and now we're going to talk about if else if statements. And you want to keep in mind that where an if statement is do this if this is true, and an if else statement is do this if this is true, otherwise do this, you want to consider that we could just keep chaining if else statements onto our if else statements. And and that ends up being what it what ends up happening. Um, so if we have three cases, an if else if else statement's going to work. Um, the more cases we have, though, the more if, else, if, else, if, else statement that we can keep, like, kind of, um, what would you say, adding together. And you might think, hey, why don't I just use a bunch of if statements? And, well, sure, why don't you? Um, chances are that would probably get the job done, provided that you organize it properly. Um, but a lot of times code is about learning what you can do, and other times code is about learning what other people have done previously. Uh, you might come across something called a switch statement, which is something we're not going to go over in this course, but it is another way to link together uh, lots and lots of different conditionals without having to use if-else statements. There's also something called a ternary operator, which we're not going to go into, but is just another way to write an if-else statement. So with that in mind, uh, let's consider case three from the introduction. If Denny's is open, we will dine there. Otherwise, if IHOP is open, we will dine there. And finally, if neither diner is open, we will make pancakes at home. So there's three eventualities. We will dine at Denny's, we will dine at IHOP, or we will dine at home. So three possible cases based on some kind of condition should immediately scream if, if else if statement. Here's that organized into pseudocode, so it's a little bit easier to see. And now we're going to uh, walk through an actual version of this. So. There's the last one that we completed. So we have Denny's is open, IHOP is open, we're both setting those equal to booleans, and then we have three console.log statements in the event that it doesn't work out. Um, some people write this like this, other people write it like this, maybe? I don't really don't like it this way. Um, but yeah, how you write it is not really that big of a deal. Uh, white space, which is to say, like, if you put an extra space here, um, or space here. It doesn't really do anything in JavaScript like it does in other languages. Um, and you can actually write this all in one line if you were feeling particularly vindictive. So the first thing we're going to do is see what happens in the case that Denny's is open. So if Denny's is open, we'll dine at Denny's. So now we're going to say that Denny's is closed, but IHOP is open. So we'll dine at IHOP. So there's the second condition. And they're both closed means that we're going to make pancakes at home. Which sometimes can be the best because you can go wild with the syrup and the ingredients you put in your pancake. So here is the general syntax, which again has not evaluated properly in the markdown, and again I have no idea why. It's almost a carbon copy of what was in the previous lesson, which did format correctly, but we're not going to worry about it. So here's the general syntax, if, and here's our condition, and then this is what's going to run if that condition is true. Then we say else if, and we have another condition, and then actions that are going to be run in the event that the first condition evaluates to false, and the second condition evaluates to true. And then down here is what happens if both the first and second condition evaluate to false. Now, you want to keep in mind that we could keep layering in else if statements. And nothing is really going to change. Um, eventually, you might want to hit an else, but I don't even think you need an else at the end of this. You could just have an else ifs all the way down. Uh, so, with that in mind, let's go ahead and get rid of that. And let's go ahead and get rid of this second else, or second if, and so there's our if, else if, else, and the way that we can layer it has been described. So with that in mind, I believe that's it for this part of the lesson. Thanks for watching, hope you enjoyed it, and we'll see you in the next one.